I want to move to begin to look at the um, Christian responses to um, CRT. Well, liberal Christians have largely um, embraced CRT wholeheartedly. Um, liberal Christians obviously um, believe that their mission is the pursuit of social justice, and therefore CRT simply becomes another tool for pursuing um, that agenda. But what about evangelicals, those who um, believe um, in the Bible uh, and for whom the gospel um, is uh, the central uh, uh, kind of mission of um, the church? Well, um, evangelical responses, particularly in the States, have varied. Um, CRT has been very divisive within families, churches, schools, seminaries and denominations. Some have enthusiastically embraced CRT and supported Black Lives Matter, for example, and they've uh, sort of said that the church needs to address systemic racism and they've wanted to join um, in being um, anti-racist. For others, they've rejected CRT altogether and have denounced it as a false gospel that will destroy the church. And there's an ever increasing number of resources and books being written um, examining and critiquing um, CRT. I want to um, engage with three main conversation partners who are critical of um, uh, CRT. Firstly, with um, Vodi Borkham, who is Dean of Theology at African Christian University in Zambia, formerly um, a, a pastor in um, the States, who has written a book called Fault Lines, The Social Justice Movement and Evangelicalism's Looming Catastrophe. Um, Owen uh, Strachan, who um, is Provost and Research Professor of Theology at Grace Bible Theological Seminary in Arkansas, who has written a book called Christianity and Wokus, Wokeness, How the Social Justice Movement is Hijacking the Gospel and the Way to Stop It. And Scott Allen, who is President of the Disciple Nations Alliance, who has written a book called Why Social Justice is Not Biblical Justice, all published in the last um, year or so. And uh, they seek to critique um, CRT and um, uh, argue for its wholesale um, rejection. They would um, go as far as saying it's not even helpful and useful as an analytical tool, but is um, a false heresy that needs to be rejected by the church. Now, I want to try to be fair to what their criticisms are and explain them. Some of them are theological and philosophical. Others are more pragmatic and practical on the uh, sort of impact of CRT on the church. So what I want to try to do is to highlight their criticisms and then to provide something by way of um, response uh, to them. So um, a whole variety of reasons why um, uh, they reject um, CRT. So firstly, they make the case that CRT is rooted in Marxism, and therefore, because it's essentially a Marxist philosophy, it ought to be um, rejected altogether. They would characterize Black Lives Matter as being an essentially Marxist organization with Marxist objectives and a Marxist methodology. Critical race theory flows out of a Marxist analysis of society, um, and critical theory itself is um, a cultural version um, of uh, kind of Marxism. So critical theory is um, rejected because of its Marxist um, pedigree um, and antecedents. Now, how do we respond to that as a criticism? Well, I think that's a fair description of where critical race theory comes from, but it doesn't necessarily mean that critical race theory is therefore false and to be rejected. But actually it just becomes a subset of the bigger question of how evangelicals are to view uh, Marxism. And I think there's a difference here between the context in the U US and the context in uh, kind of Europe. Um, US um, evangelicals tend to be um, hostile towards Marxism and socialism. Um, US evangelicals tend to be right-leaning um, economically and politically. Many European evangelicals have a more democratic socialist um, outlook and have tended to be more left-leaning economically um, and politically. Now, evangelicals have been um, critical of Marx. There hasn't been a, a wholesale support of Marx and his theories. After all, his materialism need, leaves no place for God. His solution to inequality is a, a workers' uh, kind of revolution, and that hasn't worked in history and has led to uh, tyranny and oppression. So on those grounds, most evangelicals reject um, Marxism. 
But that doesn't mean to say that his analysis of the power dynamics of society um, is necessarily wrong or flawed and that we cannot learn from it. In many ways, what Marx does is he presents a secularized version of a biblical critique of economic power. Uh, John Gray, who is the British philosopher, um, argues that Marxism is essentially a, a, a secularized version of Christian eschatology, which offers a, a material utopia of equality now rather than um, in the new creation. And some of Marx's analysis of economic power seems closer to what is reflected in, say, the Old Testament law, the prophets and the teaching of Jesus, than the liberal uh, individualistic capitalism of, say, for example, Frederick Hayek. In terms of the criticism of CRT, simply guilt by association is not enough. Simply saying it's rooted in Marxism isn't enough as a way of dismissing um, critical race theory. And I think here there is a, a United States American aversion to race to Marxism that is rooted in, in the historical experience of, of America. America was founded um, as a new nation. Um, it, it expanded massively in the 19th century when a uh, kind of land was um, occupied. And it was the case that anybody could make their future. Europe was entirely different. Europe was essentially feudal. The land was controlled by the wealthy. Uh, many countries in Europe in the 19th century were still uh, kind of um, uh, feudal in nature. Russia was a, a serf nation in the 19th century. The net effect of that is that Marxism had a purchase in Europe that it simply didn't in the States. It didn't make sense in the States, whereas it made some sense um, in Europe. But perhaps one of the things that's changed over the kind of 20th and 21st century is that as America has developed and grown, it's become more like Europe facing some of the same social problems. So um, uh, criticism is um, it's uh, Marxist. I'm not sure that that's enough um, in itself. A second criticism that's made is that the, that the premise of social justice that underlies CRT is not biblical justice. So the argument is made that the whole premise of CRT is contrary to the gospel because it aims to achieve um, social justice, which is defined as um, equality of outcome in society and an elimination of disparities of uh, wealth and advantage. And again, that is seen as being a, a kind of a goal of Marxism or socialism. The uh, counter argument is made, and I think um, Owen Strachan makes this particularly strongly, that biblical justice is not social justice in this sense, but retributive justice. That true justice is getting what you deserve as an individual. And that therefore kind of redistribution of wealth is essentially immoral. It's some form of theft from those to whom um, uh, sort of wealth um, uh, property is, is their entitlement. So the whole idea of the social justice agenda of CRT is rejected as being um, unbiblical. Now, I think the um, problem with that is that seems to me to be a reductionist understanding of justice in the Bible. It's absolutely right that justice in the Bible is retributive, but justice in the Bible is also distributive. Um, eliminating or reducing equalities of power is part and parcel of biblical uh, teaching. I think we see that embedded in the Old Testament law. We see it, for example, in the allocation of the land to all of the Israelites. Each family receives a share of the inheritance. We see it in the principle in the Old Testament law of the year of Jubilee. Every 50 years, the land is to be redistributed and returned to its ancestral families, which is essentially a 50 year redistribution of wealth to prevent accumulation. It limits personal acquisition and the power that goes with that. And failure to keep these laws um, led to uh, judgment and exile. The um, Old Testament prophets are full of denouncing the sin of Israel as not just idolatry and sexual immorality, but also economic exploitation of the poor by the rich. The failure to do justice within the community of God's people. <clears throat> 
But we find in the New Testament, as God's kingdom begins to break in, there is within the church a voluntary redistribution of wealth as the rich share with the poor. So that as Acts put it, there are no poor um, amongst them. Paul devotes an immense amount of time to encouraging the richer Gentile churches to give to the poorer churches in Judea. And in 2 Corinthians, he says the goal of that collection is to bring about equality between um, the churches. So I think there's a danger here of having a reductionist understanding of justice that doesn't recognize that the important principle of equality and to some extent uh, ameliorating disparity that is found in uh, kind of uh, the biblical teaching, the law, the prophets, the New Testament. And I wonder if that reductionist view comes from the problem of the kind of classic reformed threefold division of the law. Because the threefold division of the law ends up making um, the moral law the only enduring element of the law. The civil law in which many of these principles of um, equality are enshrined is not seen to carry over into the current dispensation, but it does reveal the character of God. So I'm not convinced by the argument that says social justice is not unbiblical. Thirdly, CRT is collectivist rather than individualist. The critique of CRT is that it views people as primarily belonging to uh, corporate groups, to have a, a collective identity. And it conceives a society as struggle between um, kind of different collective groups. And that, of course, cuts strongly against the American concept of individualism. But again, I think I'd respond to that by saying that the Bible recognizes that individuals do belong to corporate categories. That in the Bible, um, identity is both individual and collective. So the Bible can speak of men and women, slaves and free, rich and poor, young and old, Gentile and Jew, Greek and barbarian. Identity in the Bible is individual and corporate, it's complex. To use another technical term, intersectionality is nothing new. People belong to multiple identities that intersect. And the Bible describes collective groups exercising power, both economically, politically, and culturally um, over uh, one another. Fourthly, CRT is um, part of, to support CRT is to support wider critical theory, which means supporting other unbiblical um, ideologies. So the argument that's made here is that supporting CRT um, is by definition having to support the liberal progressive agenda more widely. So if you support CRT, you have no reason for not supporting, say, for example, LBGTQ rights or uh, kind of feminism. Because critical theory more widely, of which critical race theory is a subset, wants to reject and overturn established authority in society, particularly the authority of the family and um, uh, uh, kind of the um, uh, practice of um, heterosexual marriage. Well, I think that criticism is to some extent uh, kind of true. We see that in, for example, the Black Lives uh, Matter um, movement. The um, agenda of Black Lives Matter is not simply limited to issues of race, but to wanting to um, reconfigure the family, LBGTQ um, uh, rights. But the fact that that's the case doesn't necessarily mean that CRT is thereby um, invalidated. For us as Christians, uh, the standard needs to be God's word. And as I said earlier, inevitably, secular agendas and ideologies don't map straightforwardly onto God's, God's word. It's far too easy for us to think of the liberal progressive agenda as if it's some kind of monolith in which you have a, a, mono, a homogenous concept of oppression um, that needs to be um, uh, kind of overthrown and to approach it in that way. But actually, God's word tells us there are some authority structures that are biblically established and others that are not. So family is part of God's purpose in creation. There is a right authority that is given to um, families. In contrast, economic exploitation and poverty is not 
part of God's good purpose. It's not an authority structure um, that derives from uh, God's good purposes in creation. So eliminating racial inequality is not necessarily the same as having to support LBGTQ rights in society or to um, undermine um, the um, authority of the family. It doesn't necessarily um, invalidate some of the insights of CRT um, simply because uh, of some of the other claims that are made by critical theory more widely. Fifthly, um, one of the claims that's made is there's no such thing as systemic or institutional racism. That the very idea of, of racism operating within society is simply wrong. And racism is really only about individual attitudes and actions of prejudice. That evidence of disparities of outcome between different racial groups do not prove racism. And that other um, explanations um, are, are sort of may be uh, the reasons for that disparity. So, for example, in relation to the Black Lives Matter um, movement and claims about police brutality, Vody Borkham spends a lot of time looking at all the individual cases and argues that in each case, um, uh, the uh, shooting of the individual by the police was uh, often justified, that the effects have been misrepresented, misrepresented to fit with a, a CRT um, narrative. And then more widely, um, the statistics do not suggest a genocide of black men in police shootings in contrast to uh, white uh, men. He would argue that disparities in wealth um, and education between white and black communities are not a result of um, white privilege, but are the result of the uh, breakdown of the black family, um, uh, the uh, impact of drugs, uh, uh, the impact of things other than um, racism within um, the culture. And um, the uh, counter argument to institutional um, and systemic racism is the evidence of black people who have made it through their own hard work and effort. And Vody Borkin tells his own story of athletic success leading to um, academic success and achievement. But I think here there is some validity in the criticism. One of the uh, problems of CRT is it fails to recognize that there may well be other reasons for disparity and it uh, dismisses uh, those who would put other reasons forward as racist uh, for doing so. <coughs> the CRT wants to claim institutional and systemic racism as a totalizing explanation for um, disparities. But I do think that this approach fails to deal with um, a, a overwhelming evidence of disparity in society, which suggests that something is deeply wrong in that it produces divergent outcomes for people of different colors. The fact that there may be other factors at play don't, uh, doesn't really explain the extent of the disparities that seem to be suggested by the evidence. And again, there's the danger of comparing individuals and individual experience as against um, uh, averages from communities um, as a whole. And when community averages are compared, I think there's compelling evidence of um, disparity. Next, the criticism is made that CRT offers no grace and no forgiveness, that in effect it can't bring any salvation from racism for white people, that uh, CRT simply requires them to acknowledge guilt and complicity in a never-ending eternal way. No apology um, will ever be enough. The only option is to live a lifetime of um, anti-racism. But even that will not enable you to escape being um, a racist. So CRT um, uh, simply imposes a, a burden of guilt that can never be um, uh, removed. Well, in that sense, I think um, the critique is, is absolutely right. And that is uh, kind of true. <coughs> but I think part of the problem there is that that approaches the very question from a Christian perspective. That's looking at CRT through the grid of Christian categories. And I'm not sure that psychologically that is what CRT advocates themselves would want to um, bring about. <coughs> 
within the ana analysis of CRT, racism is not a personal moral sin in the way that evangelicals understand it or imagine it to be. So there isn't the uh, need for the sense of guilt and absolution that Christian categories um, uh, sort of require. CRT is much more about working to transform society. And in that sense, it is political rather than being soteriological. Um, seventh, the criticism is made that CRT distracts from much more important issues and particularly from greater issues of injustice. And again, this is a strong point that Vody Borkham makes. The Black Lives Matter movement focuses on police violence towards black men, but the biggest cause of death in the black community he argues is, is abortion. So the pro-life cause is far more important. And many of those who support critical race theory and critical theory and the liberal progressive agenda are actually pro-choice rather than pro-life. So to support this cause is to support the wrong cause and not the most important cause. Well, I think that's a, a valid point, but again, in and of itself, that doesn't invalidate the analysis of CRT. It simply speaks to issues of relative priorities of injustice in society. It doesn't invalidate the claim of CRT um, uh, that there is systemic and institutional uh, sort of racism which causes or leads to inequality and injustice in society. Um, eighthly, the argument is made that CRT divides churches and communities. So um, the responses of people to uh, CRT um, uh, uh, has led to um, kind of division. And so the argument is that CRT as an ideology leads to racial division rather than um, reconciliation. It causes black people to characterize themselves as victims and to characterize white people as oppressors. It raises uh, racial uh, tension and it divides families, churches and denominations that might have been um, united. In effect, the claim is that CRT is achieving the very opposite of what it claims um, to be seeking to achieve, which is greater uh, uh, kind of um, equity. Well, um, again, I don't think there's any doubt that that is true, but that is actually true of any ideology that confronts um, the church where Christians need to make um, a choice. I mean, just think of the massive political divisions that there are often within churches um, at, at the moment between people who support different political um, parties. Um, again, I don't think it um, takes away from the underlying question, which really ought to be whether the church has sufficiently recognised the reality of racial um, inequality. So the fact that it causes division doesn't necessarily mean that the analysis has no um, validity at all, and there is nothing that we can learn um, from it. The reality is that many churches are mono-ethnic rather than multi-ethnic, <coughs> and there continues to be a significant division, segregation between the white evangelical community and the black evangelical community. Um, to some extent, critical race theory shines a spotlight on that and forces us to ask the question why. And then um, ninthly, um, the claim is made that CRT itself is fundamentally racist. The argument here is that CRT introduces race as a fundamental category or aspect of identity. So um, it reintroduces um, uh, the idea of race in place of colorblindness. It characterizes white people as um, racist and it demands preferential treatment for black people in order to achieve um, equality. So it's seen as a perpetrating a, a, a different and new uh, form of racism rather than um, eliminating uh, racism. So those are the um, criticisms that are made and I've made some comment on them as we've gone um, along the way. You might say that the um, uh, kind of uh, criticisms can be summarized in this way. The um, critics claim that um, CRT starts from a false premise, that there is um, systemic or institutional racism. It operates from a false ideology of Marxist collectivism. It leads to a false diagnosis of the problem, which is a white hegemony in society. 
It offers a false hope, which is that the work of anti-racism is able to change society. And it offers the prospect of a false salvation, a utopia of a racially just society that can never be um, achieved. But what do I make of these um, kind of criticisms? How do we um, uh, approach them? Well, I think we have to say as Christians that CRT is a false gospel, but that's basically because it's not a gospel at all. We need to recognize it for what it is. It's a sociological theory about how to organize society in order to reduce or eliminate equality. And actually that is like all secular theories and ideologies. It's not based on God's uh, kind of word, and although it might um, reflect elements of common grace and general revelation, it is marred by um, sin. Um, because it's not a gospel, because it's a sociological theory, it inevitably fails to understand the problem and it cannot offer a real um, solution. So uh, I think we have to recognize that it's not a gospel um, and we shouldn't put it into the category of being um, a, a sort of a gospel and to seek to adopt it as a gospel is to make a fundamental category um, mistake. But I think that some of the criticism of um, CRT that is made by evangelicals, particularly evangelicals in the States, is that sometimes they fail to see that what they put in its place or what they advocate as the alternative to CRT is actually another sociological or political theory which in many ways is just as much a false gospel. The alternative that underlies sort of um, some of the criticism um, is the what I might call the kind of the gospel of the American dream. It's the ideology of liberal free market um, capitalism, which says that everybody can make it if only they work um, hard enough. That underlies the rejection of the critiques of Marxism and collectivism. But I think we need to recognize that that is not the gospel either. That's simply a different theory as to the best way to organize society in order to be able to limit um, uh, inequality and bring about uh, justice. And the danger is confusing or critiquing um, uh, critical race theory from um, a, a, a kind of a, a, another false gospel um, and you might say that the American dream is that the false religion, the myth um, of um, America, that is a powerful critique that people adopt because there is a sort of an underlying assumption on the part of many evangelicals um, in America that America is a Christian nation founded on biblical values and those are reflected in contemporary American society. And what critical race theory does is it says that that is a deception. It wants to argue that that has never been the case, that society has never offered equal opportunity to everyone, but it has inbuilt structures um, of uh, inequality um, that will not be overturned. So I think the, the challenge with some of these uh, criticisms is they're actually not biblical criticisms. They're criticisms that assume a different sociological model. And it's perfectly legitimate to argue at the level of how we organize society as to the advantages of um, a, a model of kind of collectivism, socialism, as against a liberal free market capitalism. That's a, a perfectly legitimate debate. And it's perfectly right to argue that a model may be better than another model. But it's a mistake to confuse either um, with um, the gospel. So I think we need to recognize that um, CRT is not the gospel. And it's a mistake to assume that it is. But that doesn't mean to say that it has nothing that it can teach um, evangelicals. Um, it seems to me that a, a, a kind of um, uh, sometimes our secular theories can open our eyes to help us see things the Bible teaches that we might have missed because of our cultural blinkers. And what CRT helps us to do is perhaps discern the reality of race power dynamics in society. It might help us to see um, uh, how sin corrupts and distorts God's good um, world. It might help us to see how other false gospels and sociological theories won't deliver the kind of just society that we might long for. 
it might help us to see the flaws of individualistic liberal capitalism. So CRT is like other uh, kind of secular ideologies. It might punctuate our pride. It might um, help us to see that we're not better than others, that we haven't escaped sin in the way that we uh, might have thought. And in that limited sense, it seems to me that CRT can function as a useful analytical tool. It's not a simplistic case of entirely rejecting it as a false ideology and a false gospel. There may be insights that flow from critical race theory that help us to um, identify the reality of sin and to think more clearly about how the gospel ought to apply to them. Critical race theory effectively identifies a sociological problem and proposes a political solution. We as Christians might benefit from some of the analysis and hold it up to the scrutiny of God's word, but we have an entirely different solution in the gospel that we have to proclaim. 